move on with you one more time. Welcome back. A couple of weeks ago, the developers at Polygonic sent me their new Botanix 6.0 uh, add-on for Blender 2.8 and Blender 2.9 plus. This is basically a trees and grass library collection that you can append directly to your Blender scene without any external sources. Again, this is not the type of content this channel is dedicated for, but since uh, they're really cool and they also have a Discord channel, um, I decided to might take a look at this and review it for you. So let's go. One thing I believe is important to say before I showcase the different features of this add-on in specific is that every time a developer sends me an email saying, hey, I have this very cool add-on and I want you to review on, my, on your channel to your audience. I usually only accept those and I do in a pre-validation state reviewing their code. That means that my objective with this channel is actually provide and indicate good products for you in a sense that they operate good and they also respect Blender's philosophy of clean and optimized performance long-term. And it's important that they don't conflict with each other. The coding itself, it's reasonably clean, has few operators, a list of categories, search feature, so you can have particular keywords for the different plants and tree species, subgenres. Also a list view with thumbnail, file previews, little um, images, .pngs and JPEGs of the, the trees. That's good to spot the assets. And overall, very clean category. Everything on the end tab uh, on the viewport panel. So very well organized. But if we take a look here at the actual download size, when you purchase that on Blender Market, you see that it's 2.30 gigabytes. That's a lot for add-on. But the reason behind it is that they're including each individual tree and subspecies of plants as a individual dot plant. I believe personally, probably that was a choice so they could implement the proxy feature in which you can append the plants individually without having to uh, have them editable on the scene. But uh, in overall, that's expected for a asset library type of add-on. So here we are in Blender 2.8 here. Don't worry about the interface. This is just a custom theme I created for myself. You can actually purchase it on my gun road on the description below, by the way. Um, and for you to access the Botanic add-on, you actually go to the viewer, viewport settings here, click N to access the, pro the transform window. And here we have different tabs. So the Polygonic will be available here on the very low uh, tab. And here we already have the different buttons, okay? So as you saw, we have the spawn asset button. This is, will be the one you'll be using the most. And here we can have different types of subgenres of families of plants. So we have plants, miscellaneous, flowers, conifers, uh, and you also have pots, which I'll talk about later. But here, if we click on the thumbnails, you can see the feature we had a glimpse of on the code. Uh, so we have actually the same tree, but for different seasons. So here we have maple for fall, which particularly is my favorite, uh, for summer and also for winter. So let's try to spawn, to, to spawn the winter one here. Click OK. And here we go. They will all uh, spawn on the a specific scaling. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I will scale them down a little bit. And if you notice here, it actually spawned as a proxy. So even if I try to hit tab, I can't actually edit this tree. I have to click on this button here, convert to editable. And that will actually rasterize and append the original file on this scene so I can edit it. 
We also have the search feature. So if I search for large, I can actually have all the large types. There's even Japanese large. Let's try to spawn this one this time. And you can also convert them to edit bow directly here on this dropdown. If you don't want to have the, the, the work of clicking that button very often. So now, if I click edit, you can see I have the different vertices of the foliage here. And the assets themselves, they are very clever because they are actually very, lots of planes stacked together to create this illusion of volumetric uh, plants. And they work very well in different HDR positions, even with uh, blur applied and different types of color management. If I come here to high contrast, for example, you can see we have very, very beautiful type of um, sun rays passing throughout the different trees here. Even on a very close detail. Another great thing that I notice is that look at these two pots here, okay? If I try to scale it, notice what happens. The size of the terrain and the rocks here are kept the same in relative to the ones on the smaller pot. And that's very good if you're trying to compose scenes and you still want that uh, specific look and don't mismatch scaling. This is actually being controlled by this very clever node system that it's coming building, building with the atom. So here we have different parallax node. You can even tweak it to your needs and see what happens. You can put more terrain, less terrain, more foliage, and still have play with this parallax. You can even change the texture if you want and adapt it to your needs. So that's something I found that's very cool. I was not a previous user of past iterations of this add-on, but on the 6.0 version, they added a new feature to scatter assets because of course, uh, grass was not available in, on past iterations. Uh, and also a particle system with like a weight painting. So you can choose what parts of the plane you can have the grass or not. And uh, I think that's an interesting feature, uh, especially on this price range, $70. Still, uh, this is to compete with Grass Vault, which is priced at a higher price tag. Of course, they are not running on promotions right now. But if you go to their website, they have an interesting branding. And they have this, this feature actually. If you come here to the Grass Vault Pro, and of course they have a 49 version, which I'm looking forward to test and compare as well. Uh, but they had this option since day one, which was called weight painting. So it's the similar feature, basically the same feature and the season feature as well. So interesting how they compete on different price points. Of course, now if I select this plane here and I come here to scatter assets, I can create the plus icon and select the type of grass I want. Of course, clean the search filter. And now we have basic. Let's go with basic. Click OK. And now we have populated the scene here with grass. It's very, very easy to do. However, my poly count increased drastically and also my FPS dropped. So here I can tweak the number of particles. I can go lower to 800 if I want. Now this is looking a little better. 
maybe tweak the material here. Now, let's talk about the things I found that is not as good in this add-on. And it's about a little bit of all the context of this channel in specific, which is more focused to real-time assets. And I believe all both Grasswald and also Botanic right now, they're very focused to people that want to get a fixed render image of their files to showcase their clients. So this is very like devoted to ArchVs and probably concept artists that are in dispose of the 3D assets for the scene, but they are not interested in, let's say, putting these assets on a game or let's say Sketchfab, for example. So you can showcase it on directly on the web browser. And the problem with this is that uh, this add-on is very great. If your end product, and by that your final render, is within Blender and Blender only. I say that because if you try to import these assets to Unity or Unreal Engine, there is just it's just impossible. Okay, it, those are not game assets, which a library like uh, Quicksil MegaScan, in partnership with Unreal, is more devoted to. Okay, so for each individual tree that you add to your scene you have a dedicated bark material and a dedicated plant material as well. So you can see with the few assets I have added on the scene here, I already have up to 50 materials on my scene right now, 50 materials for every individual pot and for every individual grass. In a game engine or game development environment, this is absurd as each individual material would be generating a draw call and impacting the performance of your system a lot. So if they added a capability or prob probably develop a different product focused on real-time plants and real-time assets for nature that could run or on engines like that, that would be awesome. And I said that because all the trees that you see here, let's say for each individual subtype of tree, you could pack the same plants and the same material in the same atlas and have one single material for every single tree that is within this collection. And that would save on performance a lot. Another thing is that although it looks compelling that Botanic and uh, Grassfold have a very huge set of nature props like this, it shouldn't be considered the ultimate pack for nature as there are still things that will be missing, such as vines, you know? If you go to Blender Market, you can see products like vertical escapes that is only dedicated for vines and different types of vines. So I see this as being used on different types of like luxurious hotel projects, RTVs, homes, in which you really need to decorate vertical uh, and, and architectural things. Meanwhile, Grassfold and Botanic I see more in the realm of populating your scene as a complement to your architectural project. As a final verdict, would I recommend Botanic? Well, it's a tough question right now, as I haven't compared Grasswald in depth to actually see the price gap and the point of the $70 and how they stack up with each other. But from a brief analysis, they look very similar. And everything related to going out, scanning your own trees, your own assets, it's very time consuming. So by the end of the day, buying Grasswald or buying Botanic, you're saving anyway on your time. You still 
we'll find and we'll want very specific types of trees, such as vines or even climbing trees that can be adapted to the overall geometry and topology of your project. There is also Quixel Mega Scans, which in my point of view is more devoted to hero props and assets that you will need to use to give verosimility and context to your scenes. From what I understand, they are more optimized for game engines as well, if your end result is definitely a real-time visualization. So, I wouldn't recommend Botanic or Grasswald if you want to upload your assets to Sketchfab or any other type of game, they are not for that. I would definitely recommend them, however, for static movies, renders, and uh, architectural visualizations. That's it for this review. Again, take everything with a grain of salt. Opinions are my own. Everyone has different needs and different budgets. So what could be considered expensive for one could be cheap for others. And 3D is such a diverse area right now. So these add-ons being multi-purpose, they are very different to toggle and narrow down which areas they can be used to. I don't want to constrain anyone here. So let me know what you think on the comments. Leave a like down below. I also have uh, a Twitter page. You can contact me directly there. Um, I work for Sketchfab full time. And sometimes if I have time, I can reply directly to you. But uh, take that in mind. So see you until the next time. Bye.